trying to figure out the best course of action because the only reference, you know, when I Googled a lot and everything, there is, I mentioned this in the Instagram, there's like the Centeno Schultz Clinic that, yep. uh, you know, does the transverse. But if that's not what I need, and, you know, that obviously doesn't really make a lot of sense. And there, there's a gentleman that I know through hemp has, has worked with you. And I, I just, you know, I, I appreciate everything you put out and how transparent you are. And I just sort of have a, a good feeling, you know, about about you, to be honest, and, you know, if I can find a way to sort of work with you, get, like, PRP, or I think that's sort of the path to go. Right. You know, I, I'm just trying to, I guess, build stability so that I can actually start to heal. So I'll kind of walk you through some of the things that I have uh, realized in my time of treating spines, uh, treating the cervical spine, and treating people in general, and in, in treating uh, CCI and other upper cervical instability issues, you know, whether it's a, a lower or a mid cervical instability. So there are, there are things that we can do that are non-injection based that go hand in hand with our injections, meaning different supplements, different nutritional approaches, uh, different things in your lifestyle that can help make our procedures work better. And in some cases, those things on their own can improve symptoms. These things become more important the more severe the, the symptoms are, okay? So it sounds like for you, with being basically functionally disabled, that, you know, things like vitamin C, collagen, making sure our vitamins and minerals are, you know, uh, are topped up, our nutritional approach is on point, you're sleeping well, you're moving and exercising as much as you can with your current limitations, like all those things um, are going to become super critical and can help your symptoms start to improve slowly, but can improve uh, while we are doing all of the other work, injection-based things like that. When it comes to, so that's on the kind of the front end. On the, the back end, uh, meaning like after a procedure, are any of our cervical instability cases, physical therapy has to be in the mix. Obviously, I have uh, people out here that I refer to for physical therapy, but if you're in Philadelphia and you don't plan on relocating here for the next uh, three to nine months to uh, undergo treatment with me, then it will have to be obviously finding a physical therapist who is at least a little bit smart in the realm of at least cervical spine issues and preferably some form of uh, cervical cranial or just cervical instability such that you can continue the work after the injection because the injections are powerful the injections can be phenomenal and get patients out of the hole but when we have an uphill battle like we do with major instability in the cervical spine and then even up into the uh, c0 c1 joint uh, physical therapy is going to be hugely beneficial because a lot of stuff happens in the neck that our brain is very acutely in tune to and over time, our brains can become, uh, I don't want to say disillusioned, but basically there, there can be changes in proprioception, in muscle guard, a whole bunch of things that physical therapy is going to be really great at helping. So, so that's, good, like, that's a mandatory thing that we have to make sure that we have physical therapy on board prior to uh, moving forward just because I know from other times when I wasn't this strong on my you know, stance for physical therapy, that, uh, that it has not turned out as, as well as it should. So that's on the non-injection side. On the injection side of the equation, uh, what we've seen and kind of what I mentioned in our uh, discussions on Instagram is that uh, sometimes we don't need to treat the transverse and the ALR ligament. And I don't treat those ligaments. Those are uh, very specialized procedures that I'm not equipped to do so here. Um, however, I can treat the uh, C0, C1 joint, so our uh, atlanto-occipital joint and the capsule around that, along with the remainder of the uh, joints in the cervical spine, so our C1, uh, C2, and then our true facet joints, C3 down through C7. I take a really comprehensive approach. We don't just treat joints, the multifidi muscles, uh, some of the erector spinae muscles, all of those are really important in spinal mechanics and spinal stability. The suboccipital muscles are crazy, crazy important in all of that as well. 
Um, and then we obviously look to address any collateral damage that has occurred, such as the, the greater occipital nerve, uh, where we can have compression of that from the increased muscular tension that is present there because of the instability. Right, and so we take a comprehensive approach in uh, in that regard. We have not yet needed to refer anybody out to actually have their uh, transverse or their ALR uh, ligament treated. I'm sure that patient will come through my door at some point where we do our therapies and they only get so far, and then the patient needs to we need to refer out to have those other therapies done. So that's all, always a possibility. But um, in talking with other colleagues who who have who have referred out for that procedure, uh, what they've all at least reported is that in the path to getting there, patients get better, but then it just it gets to a point where they are still better, but they're not getting fully better. And that's when they've had to refer out for, you know, the the more advanced procedures. And, you know, and I'm kind of in the camp of you as well, you know, where the uh, if if you don't have to have a uh, a big procedure like the procedure that they do at Regenex, then that's probably a good thing. You may need it at some point. We can't we can't know that until either you do it or we do everything else but that and we look at you know how you do. But just like trying to avoid surgery, right? Uh, I always try to avoid the the bigger, more risky procedures if possible. Uh, just again, based on the inherent risks that can be associated with some of those procedures.